In the previous lessons, the elements in the intake subsystem that participate in the air supply for the formation of the mixture were covered. There is another element for regulating the amount of air intake, but it engages in a completely different way. An EGR valve directs part of the exhaust gas that mixes with fuel and air into the intake line. Why has exhaust gas recirculation become an inevitable part of the injection system in modern engines? Some consider it redundant because without it, the engine does not change its characteristics, and when it gets stuck, it creates major problems in operation. Is it essential? In the following presentation, you will get the answer to these questions. Exhaust Gas Recirculation EGR In the 70s of the last century, legal regulations appeared whose aim was to reduce the harmfulness of vehicle exhaust emissions. Emission regulations have become more stringent over time and are directly binding on vehicle manufacturers. In the exhaust gas of a gasoline engine, three harmful components are dangerous to health. These are carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and nitrogen oxides. Electronic engine control, fuel injection system, and catalytic converter affect the reduction of exhaust gas emissions. However, this is often not enough additional functions have to be introduced that reduce the amount of certain harmful components of the exhaust gas. The exhaust gas recirculation, EGR, system is designed to control nitrogen oxides. This harmful component increases its share in the exhaust gas when the temperature and pressure are expanded during the combustion of the mixture in the cylinder. Increased concentration occurs from partial to full engine load and when the mixture is lean. The EGR valve connects the exhaust and intake manifold through which 6% to 10% of the exhaust gas is passed to reduce the combustion temperature in the engine cylinder. Using the EGR system reduces the concentration of nitrogen oxides by up to 40%. The exhaust gas is inert, chemically inactive, and helps to reduce the amount of nitrogen oxides. It is easily mixed with the mixture and thus introduced into the engine cylinder. Since there are no combustible components, it slows down and suppresses combustion, thus lowering the temperature in the cylinder. Also, the inert gases absorb part of the heat of the flammable gases. All this affects the reduction of the concentration of nitrogen oxides in the exhaust gas. EGR opens only under conditions of increased concentrations of nitrogen oxides. However, the exhaust gas introduction into the intake manifold cannot always be done at all states because it would disturb the engine operation. In the following cases, the EGR valve does not open. At a cold start and in the warm-up state, because the concentration of nitrogen oxides is low when the engine is cold. In this case, the combustion temperature of the mixture in the cylinder is lower, and the nitrogen is removed with the exhaust gases before oxidation and the formation of harmful nitrogen oxides occur. When the engine is idling because then a small amount of the fuel-air mixture is burned and the combustion temperature is low. When the throttle is more than 50% open, the EGR valve does not open, 
even though due to the higher combustion temperature, the concentration of nitrogen oxide has increased because the operation of the engine would be impaired. In acceleration state for safety as full engine power is required. In this mode, the engine runs for a short time and the increase in the concentration of nitrogen oxides is negligible. If the EGR valve opens in any of the above cases, the number of revolutions and power drop adversely affect the engine operation. So, the EGR valve is open only in a partial engine load state up to 50% throttle opening. Then, in addition to lowering the concentration of nitrogen oxides, EGR reduces the possibility of auto-ignition of the mixture and simultaneously reduces fuel consumption. There are internal and external EGR. Internal EGR is little known and is used in vehicles with a variable cam adjustment system. These systems have variable valve opening times. During regular operation in the exhaust stroke, the intake valve is closed and the exhaust valve is open. The piston moves toward the top dead center forcing inert gas from the cylinder into the exhaust pipe. At the end of the fourth stroke, the exhaust valve closes and the intake valve opens. Then the first stroke begins, and the suction of the fresh mixture into the engine cylinder. When the partial load state occurs, the conditions are created to start the internal EGR. The system rotates the intake cam to achieve an earlier opening of the intake valve at the end of the fourth stroke during inert gas discharge. In that case, the inert gas is diverted not only through the exhaust pipe, but also into the intake manifold. At the end of the fourth stroke, the exhaust valve closes and the piston moves to the bottom dead center while the intake valve is still open. First, the inert gas is sucked from the intake manifold, then the fresh mixture. In this way, the engine sucked in the appropriate amount of inert gas with the air-fuel mixture, which is the goal of the EGR regulation. Some manufacturers use a second variant to extend the exhaust valve closing time through the initial part of the intake stroke. Then, during the first stroke, the exhaust gas from the exhaust pipe is sucked in simultaneously with the fresh mixture. Then the exhaust valve is closed, and until the end of the first stroke, only the air-fuel mixture is sucked from the intake line. There are three different types of external EGR systems. The oldest type is a vacuum-controlled EGR. It consists of a vacuum valve and an electromagnetic valve. The engine control unit of the engine through the electromagnetic valve controls the operation of the vacuum valve, which opens and closes the exhaust gas flow into the intake manifold. The vacuum-controlled EGR valve contains a membrane that separates the two chambers. If necessary, a vacuum or external air is supplied to one chamber from the electromagnetic valve, which acts on the diaphragm together with the spring. A valve lever is attached to the other end of the diaphragm. At the lever end is a pencil valve for closing the exhaust gas recirculation channel. When there is outside air in the upper chamber, it together with the spring pushes the diaphragm and closes the EGR valve. By creating the conditions for the EGR valve to open, the engine control unit supplies voltage to the solenoid valve, which is switched to the position to pass the vacuum. A vacuum enters the upper chamber instead of outside air. Due to the weaker pressure, the diaphragm rises and opens the valve for the exhaust gas flow. 
When the conditions for exhaust gas recirculation are disrupted, the engine control unit power supply is cut off. The solenoid valve switch closes the vacuum supply and allows outside air into the vacuum valve. Pressure rises in the upper chamber. Higher air pressure pushes the diaphragm and closes the valve, stopping the exhaust gas flow to the intake manifold. So, when a vacuum is supplied from the solenoid valve, the EGR valve is open and we have exhaust gas recirculation. When outside air is supplied, the EGR valve is closed and we have no exhaust gas flow into the engine intake manifold. The disadvantage of the vacuum EGR valve is that it only has two states, open and closed. Thus, there is no possibility of regulating the exhaust gas flow between these two states. Another type is electric, linear EGR valves. They can regulate the amount of exhaust gas, making them more suitable for more precise and comprehensive recirculation control. It is a single device that contains an electric drive and a valve. There are two types, electromagnetic and with a stepper motor. With the electromagnetic EGR valve, a spring closes the valve. The valve armature is outside the electromagnet. When power is applied to the coils of the electromagnet, a strong magnetic field is created inside the solenoid coil that pulls in the armature compressing the spring. Then the EGR valve is open. The solenoid valve is powered by PWM signals from the engine control unit via a two-pin connector. The longer the opening period of the PWM signal, the stronger the magnetic field and the more the valve opens. When there is no power, the spring closes the EGR valve. With the second type of linear EGR valve, positioning is done using a stepper motor. The valve opening is in steps. The stepper motor is powered from the engine control unit via a six-pin connector. Depending on the combination of the power supply of the different coils, the electric motor rotates and takes an appropriate position. By rotating the armature, the valve opens and closes in steps. With the first EGR valves, the engine control unit had no feedback on whether exhaust gas recirculation had occurred. Service technicians often close the return line, and no matter that the ECU opens the EGR valve, there is no exhaust gas flow. That is why the legal regulations were tightened, which required control of the correctness of the EGR system by the engine control unit. Manufacturers have solved this requirement by adding control functions of pressure analysis in the intake line through the MAP sensor, analyzing the signal from the oxygen sensor, and installing a valve position sensor in the EGR. Now the ECU can control the correct operation of the EGR valve and the performed exhaust gas recirculation. The ECU detects any blockage, disconnection, or failure of the EGR system. It stores an error code, turns on the malfunction indicator lamp, and the engine runs with a limited maximum number of revolutions because the exhaust gas emission is increased. This limited engine function allows the driver to take the vehicle to a car repair shop. Some vehicles also have a digital type of EGR valve. It consists of two or three electromagnetic valves that control the opening of openings of different sizes. The engine control unit controls the opening of each solenoid valve individually. When a solenoid is energized, its plunger is lifted, 
and exhaust gas can recirculate through the orifice into the intake manifold. The computer controls the total amount of exhaust gas through the valve opening combination. The question arises whether the EGR valve is necessary for an internal combustion engine because it works normally without it. The EGR valve was introduced to reduce the concentration of nitrogen oxides in the exhaust gases as a dangerous component that leads to health problems and causes cancer of the respiratory organs. In addition, in a partial load state, it lowers the engine temperature and reduces fuel consumption. Finally, EGR is required to comply with the legal norms on exhaust emissions. Driving with a faulty EGR valve is punishable. That's why EGR is necessary for ourselves and the people in our environment.